Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, September 3rd. I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us. Yes, absolutely. I'm Courtney Savala on this Friday Eve, as we like to say. We are so giddy today, and we uh, hope you're ready. I know. You never know what's going to happen on these kinds of shows. Well, let's <laughs> talk about this boozy box. Boozy box. You guys know one of my favorite places to eat in town. Weights and Measures right there in Love Midtown. It. It's off Caroline Street. They've got a great bakery. Also, uh, it's a great place to go have dinner or brunch on the weekends, but they dropped off these little little boozy boxes each box makes 10 cocktails y'all this is so cool so this is available for pickup at weights and measures yeah right? you can pick it you call them give them at least an hour in, in, in advance they're open from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. but check out what's in this little box so cute tons of fresh juices look at this little mug they have I'm just gonna lay so it all you out. have the drink with the fresh cucumber juice and I have a watermelon juice and then it has um, uh, margarita, sour mix, fresh limes. We've got the um, tahine. What are those? The fresh watermelon juice, fresh okay. cucumber juice, lime, mint, sour mix. And you know what's great? So they, we've always heard that fresh juice totally can make or break a cocktail. So it's all fresh juice, plus you get the tequila. Oh, it makes about word. 10 cocktails. Call them. They will hook you up. Um, I think it's 55 bucks. So $55. That's, that's about $5 per cocktail if you're making 10 of them. Oh, wow. This is going to be really nice. Good, right? Fresh cucumber. I love this watermelon. It's perfect. It really It's good stuff. Yeah. Just call them an hour in advance. Ask for Kara. Thanks again for these boozy boxes. And on Saturday, they're doing a little uh, Kentucky Derby party where you can get mint juleps, Kentucky mules, eight bucks. Wow, oh, I um, love it. With a bowl of bourbon there. So cheers. Drink up. Cheers. Absolutely. I love this little uh, mini tahine too. It's so yeah, yummy. You, you can put it on the rim mm -hmm. if you want. So it's good. And in honor of the Kentucky Derby, we uh, we have some little hats. We do from have last our, week's. Uh, we segment. do have our hats, our Derby hats. Which this is a redo because typically the Kentucky Derby is in May. It's the first Saturday in May. Is that right? It Something was. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know during COVID, but we're super excited to be able to have the Kentucky Derby here on KPRC. And I know Derek, you love a good. You love to have a good time. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay. So. I've got a little challenge for you, but you have to do a costume change a little okay. bit. Or an addition, not necessarily a change. Do you wanna do you wanna step out? And okay. So Where do I go? It's backstage. Okay. So we've got a little something for you. Leave your hat. You might want to take another swig or take the drink with you. I'll take the drink. Yeah. Le leave the hat? You can leave the hat. Okay. Yeah. Out here? So while well, well, Derek is going to go backstage to a little costume edition, I'm just going to tell you, stay right here. Oh, we're going to no. do something fun. So coming up on today's show, we've got a lot to get to. Of course, celebrating the Kentucky Derby at home from a signature mint julep to a new twist on the pimento cheese sandwich and much more. Of course, the races air this weekend right here on KPRC Channel 2. So this segment will help you get ready. Plus, we're going to meet a lo uh, with America's CEO. This is, of course, Chief entertaining officer Tim Laird. We love when he's on the show. Always has really, really great ideas. Plus, ahead today, we are going to meet a local woman headed to the Tokyo Olympics in 2021 to compete in Taekwondo. We're going to learn more about her incredible journey to the Olympics, including how she bounced back after having six knee surgeries. So I feel like that is so amazing, and I cannot wait to hear her story. Um, okay, so we we covered that. Derek, are you all right? Can you meet me back here, or what? What's up? Yeah. Do you need help? I mean, I think I think I have this on, in the correct. Did you turn the fan on? <laughs> yes. So okay, so we're works. I love the Kentucky Derby. I love it, and. Um, it's on my bucket list one year to go. So this year, of course, you know, you cannot see it. Best place is going to be in your house. Um, do you need help? No, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And now I get it because you can't really have a proper Kentucky Derby celebration without a few cocktails. But uh, you also, in order to have a Derby, you need to have a horse. You got to have a horse. Come on out, baby. Come on, gallop. Here we go. This little guy's tired. What's so. your horse's name? Uh, it's Courtney. Oh, you're terrible. <laughs> you have to have a better horse name. 
you know. I don't, I don't know. What's a good horse Smarty name? Smarty Jones was one. Who's, you know, we need a good horse name. Okay. Long in the tooth, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, this is okay. perfect. Okay, so, no, no, no. So I have don't, to wear no, this the whole show? Don't, no, don't sit, don't sit. Why? Part two of your challenge is we just want you to go around the station and announce how excited you are about the Kentucky Derby. So Ray, Raymond is standing by with another camera. That's why you have this, uh, this mask, mask here for Put me. Put your mask on. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of instruction when you get to somebody, when you find somebody out in the, in the lobby. Where should I go, to the just, lobby? Just go to the lobby. So we have a camera to follow you. Come on, boo, let's go. Come on, long in the tooth. Time to go. The rest Saddle of the people up. in this building Saddle already up. hate us. Long in the tooth, let's go. Oh, I feel man. like we need some Kentucky Derby music. <laughs> Yes. Oh, this is good. Come on, Gallop. I think my little horse likes to dance. Entertain us, entertain us. Now, when you get to the lobby, I'm just going to have you stop, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Say hi to our control room in there. Hey, guys. No you one? You guys are all, yeah, no one's in there. Oh, okay. They're all oh, taking control out. room. They're all sleeping. <laughs> okay. Come on, Gallop so, a little faster. So far, so There's good nobody around. No one's back. Usually, you know our, what they've our all run. <laughs> We'd all be back here getting ready to go out on assignment or come back, but there's nobody here, so oh, I'm looking out. Oh, your tail out. is beautiful. <laughs> I didn't realize I had one. <laughs> okay, anybody in the lobby? Uh, oh, no. No one? Yes, we do have some. Okay, people. stop, stop. And I need you to say, did you hear about the horse with the negative attitude? Hey, Dominique, did you hear about the horse with a negative attitude? Did you hear about the horse with a negative attitude? No. He always said, nay. He always said, nay. Nay. <laughs> okay. Good okay. to see you guys. Good to see you. Keep going. Now keep what? Going. Keep going this way to the newsroom? I think so, yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Here and your go. next line is, just start yelling, how much money did the Bronco have? Wait, say it again? How much money did the Bronco have? Hey, Mike, how much money did the Bronco have? Only a buck. Only a buck. <laughs> I'm here all day, folks. And just and just yell this one out. Just start screaming. What causes horses to sneeze the most? Causes horses to sneeze the most. Hay fever. Hay fever. <laughs> oh, Christine Noel gave me a courtesy laugh. So did Lauren. <laughs> Now gallop, gallop your best gallop you've ever had in your entire life. Forward, backwards. Drunk. Backwards, moonwalk. Give him a good nay. Say hey. Girl. Have a great day at work, everyone. Hey. Hey. <laughs> okay. Okay, is, is that the end of my challenge? That's it. You have come in first in our first Kentucky Derby. Dominique has one for us. Go for it. What did the cow say to the horse? What did the cow say to the horse? I don't know. Why such a long face? <laughs> Good one. Love it, Dee. Okay. I love how no one's making eye contact with you, just Dominique. People are pretending they don't know me. Look, here's Frank Billingsley coming down the stairs. Oh, we lost your signal, boo. Oh. Are you back? We're back. Oh, you're back. Look, Franklin's I mean, coming down. Nope, it's gone now. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's gone. Now it's back. <laughs> <laughs> if only we worked in a television station <laughs> and we could figure out the signal. See if Frank's knows. Hey, Franklin. Yeah, there. We have a question for you. Did you hear about the horse with a negative attitude? Did you hear about the horse with a negative attitude? No, what? Tell me about the horse with the negative attitude. He always, he always said, said nay. <laughs> A horse is a horse. <laughs> okay. You all can go back to pretending you don't know me. Oh, guess what? We lost your signal again. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to get on that signal issue. Okay, now we're just looking at your tail feather. Shake it. Shake it. Shake Do I get it. to come back into the studio yes, now? Yes, please. Please hurry. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? I mean, I drank your drink. I hope you don't mind. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I swear our coworkers hate us. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Did I win the challenge? I mean, yes, you won. Look, you have a cocktail. You won a cocktail. Oh, yes. Good boy. I know you love dad jokes. What are you talking about? I know you like dad jokes. <laughs> Those were good, right? Those were pretty good. Good job. You're welcome. Now I just have to figure out where to put my horse. I know. Well, right there. Park him. <laughs> 
Horses don't belong on our laps. Well, this one does. Well, okay then. <laughs> The newest addition to the Houston Life family. Yes. Wow, well, that um, that really helped me work up a sweat there. I know. You know, that's 10 minutes of our lives we're never getting back. That was. Dominique, thank you <laughs> for playing along. The you know I love one. you. And Frank, the rest of them were like. I know. No one, everybody was guy? avoiding <laughs> eye contact, which I love. In a new, in, that never happens. I see Chris Gutierrez in there. He was doing, he was looking at napkins. He wasn't even looking at anything that he could read. It <laughs> Chris was, was pretending to not know us. <laughs> and there's a guy named Mike Lopez who works in the new Room and he was like, Are you drunk already? <laughs> yeah. Mike, What's it's, it to you, Mike? It's 3 10 p.m. Yeah. No, of <laughs> course not. We are just that much fun. Oh, Lord. Are you okay? <laughs> really sweating now. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what else you got? Um, I'm actually it. really enjoying this now. Could I we know. continue? I feel you want to go back out there? Or, I don't know, phone a friend, surprise them with this. I, I think you should take it home. We need a better name for the horse. We should have been better prepared for when you took the line. We could have announced you properly. How about Toothy? Because he doesn't have any teeth. Yeah. That's, no, that's kind of boring. Toothy the horse. I think it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I am really, well, really sweating now. Viewers maybe can come up with a name for the horse. Let us hmm. know. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. All right, what else is going on? Since you're in the driver's seat, take I me know. through. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> take a little sippy of your oh uh, cocktail. Thank you, you weights that, and right? measures for this. Okay. Now, let me ask you this, because this is kind of an interesting topic. Do you feel like, you know, in the age of coronavirus now, so many people are saying they're, you know, slowing life down and they're kind of, you know, decompressing. Do you feel like it's made you a better person? Ooh, that's a very good question. I think it's perhaps made me more introspective. Like we, we're constantly in our house, not just in our house, but with my family and the people in my inner circle, we're constantly talking about the things that really matter right. in life, each other, the relationships. And yeah, I think that it's definitely changed my, my perspective on a few things. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that we're kind of slowing down. We're not going from point A to point B, rushing to the next thing. Um, but I also feel like I'm a little bit more in tune with like things that bug me. Does that sound bad? <laughs> we are like the same person. I know. Right? Yeah, that too, that too. Okay. And I think because we have been focusing on the things that matter to us, the things that bug out, us, it's right? sort of like, oh my gosh, ain't nobody got time for that. Or people who do this right. don't have room for them in my life. So let yeah. me tell you the reason why I'm, I'm, I kind of came to this realization. So my birthday was early in August. August 9th. And um, I got a gift from someone that I don't know who sent it to me. It was sent to my house and I'm just gonna tell you what it is, because it's super cute, and it's a t-shirt that says dog mom on it, <laughs> right? And it's kind of funny, because I was the one that didn't want the dog, and now Oscar and I are like besties, and you know. Do you remember the time you texted your friend and texted her dog face? Because <laughs> it was an autocorrect <laughs> oh, fail? I, so when you said the shirt said dog, I thought, oh it, my, anyway, right. that's where my mind went. So, dog, okay. dog face. So someone sent me a dog mom shirt and there was nothing on the label. It wasn't wrapped, but it was sent to me and I don't know who sent it. And you know me, I love a good thank you card. I do. So I cannot send this person a thank you. I can't acknowledge the gift because I don't know where it came from. That's frustrating. And sometimes we recently got a letter from a woman who was so nice and talking about the show and we didn't get a return address. I know. And she thanked my mom for naming me Derek and we live on the coast. Oil, Derek. Yes. And I wanted to write her a nice note back, but no. I know. I and share your sweet... frustration. So that kind of bugs me. You know, when you give somebody or you take time out of your day and or maybe just send somebody something or they don't acknowledge the gift. I think that's, I don't know. Oh, Is if, that bad? Oh, if someone doesn't acknowledge a gift? Right. Oh yeah, no, I think that's totally rude. I think it's totally rude. But if rude. someone doesn't well, allow you the opportunity to an, acknowledge a gift, I don't think right. that's really rude. Right, no. Maybe they want to be anonymous. Maybe. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was you. Dog mom. I know, I don't know. I don't know who sent it to me, but it got me thinking of the times where, you know, you've sent something or given somebody something and they don't acknowledge it. Not a thank you, not a text, n nothing. Yeah, I can think of many, many instances. You know? There was actually someone who reached out to me who wanted me to donate to a nonprofit organization. Okay. And I wrote a check um, that I thought was, you know, like quite a generous donation. Yeah. And then the, the check actually was not cashed. 
And so like two months later, I reached out and I said, hey, did you receive this donation that I made? Oh yeah, yeah, I just haven't had a chance to deposit it yet. Uh, no. No, thank you. No, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate my students, you know, are appreciative. You're supporting this cause, whatever. No. Nothing. And I thought, wow, not only am I not donating again, but I don't have room for people who no. are not courteous. I it's know. rude. Oh, and th whatever. I shouldn't go What? On. Tell me. Well, just there are some people. I heard from this person again when he needed me to, like, help promote a business. And I'm like, girl. No. Not happening. Mm -mm, that I, it's it's interesting too. I mean, I think the older you get, the more you kind of have to weed out people. But yes. I have there are a but number of people you in my can't life. Weed out people. Sometimes they're right there. Well, some people only contact you when, when they, they need, need something, something or when they want something, mm -hmm. and it just gets old. So, anyway, let's change the subject. Back to my cute horse. Uh, I think our viewer, Paul, has written in, name the horse Lightning. Paul, I love that suggestion. I do, too. Maybe he'll just have to run a little faster little, to little earn faster. that name. Absolutely. But thank you You're for the suggestion. Sport. We You're love it. Sport. Okay, drink up. Hey! Hey! What are you going to have for lunch today? Hey! Hey! <laughs> After the break, need to get out of the house. We've got great ideas for socially distant fun around town. Right back. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys made me do this, okay? Welcome back. You know, if you're sick of those Zoom calls and being a little stir crazy, clearly you're not alone. Many are looking for fun, safe ways to get out of the house and socialize. Yeah, Let's Roam CEO is here to share some socially distant activities you can enjoy on a date night or with your whole family right here in Houston. Welcome to the show, Charlie. How are you doing? Well, hey, everyone. And it's so great that you've compiled this list because you've done the work for our viewers in advance. And one of the top things on your list, Sawyer Yards. This is something that Courtney has already done with her family. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's such an awesome experience to be able to do these type of things. And our team working to find these type of different activities is really amazing to be able to find these little things. But the Sawyer movie is pretty awesome. It's, you know, it's one of those great things in the middle of Houston where... I just can't believe they have such a, a large screen set up to do it. And lar when you say large, you're not kidding, 100 feet. And it's what's so cool is not only is this a totally unusual new experience for most people watching a movie on the side of those silos, but check out that view of downtown Houston. Amazing. Can't be beat. Yeah, it's I think it's really important to do things that are outside, engage. And there's something also, a little bit oh, I'm sorry, Charlie, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say something a little bit different, something new, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, I think is really important. So whether you're doing a movie with a hundred foot screen or something simple with you and the kids, I think it's really important. When we set up our activities, these scavenger hunts that take you all over Houston, it shows you all these little hidden things. And one of my favorite things, especially since it's so hot out there right now, is to make a, a big batch of lemonade. And there's tons of great state fair lemonades. And since we're all inside right now, uh, we can recreate it at home. They actually have the, li the recipes listed. And then you go out on an adventure like a scavenger hunt or take a picnic and see some of the great local businesses. You could go around town and see uh, these great see some of these great uh, sites too. And what's great about the picnics when you're doing that, there's so many great ideas out there, even if you want to pack your own. But there's grazables is one of my favorites to order uh, these basically charcuterie boxes that are already done for you. Yeah, yeah. The grazables are great. Stack cookies and it just picnic box lunches, too. And what's cool is also being outside actually lowers the risk of sp spreading germs. So if you're going to do something, try to do it outside, especially if you're uh, trying to be socially distanced with other people outside your household, too. Yeah, and the things that you have on the list here are, are just so great. The Gerald D. Hines Water Wall Park, uh, that's an incredible spot. The late, beloved Gerald D. Hines. Herman Park, the Manila Lawn. Uh, there are so many beautiful spots to sit down, have a picnic. You mentioned, Charlie, this scavenger hunt idea. Talk to us about that. We're just about out of time, but this is something that is great for all ages, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's totally fun, whether you're going with your family or a date. 
There's a different scavenger hunt for you all over Houston. Just search in Google scavenger hunt Houston and you can find a scavenger hunt near you. But it actually takes you to Herman Park and takes you all over town and you're competing for challenges and points to see if you can beat the Houston. So it's a great way. It's all self-guided, app-led, takes you from spot to spot and tries just to show you those things that you normally wouldn't see. So I bet even if you've lived in Houston your whole life, that you'll be able to find just a few things that are totally mind-blowing uh, out there. And rediscovering the city, city that we know and love. Always these are great ideas. Charlie Harding from Let's Roam, the CEO. Thanks so much for giving us these great ideas. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. And in case you missed anything, do not worry. We have got the full list of activities on our website, HoustonLife.tv. And we'll be right back with a look at what's coming up on the news at 4. Well, welcome back. You know, we've gotten a lot of comments on the book, the Facebook, about oh. what your horse's name should be. I was like, what book? <laughs> oh, the book of faces. Yes, that one. the book of faces. So Melody says, I like hers, cocktail. Oh, that's very horse. nice. Okay, that's, that's a contender for sure. Becky writes in, horse name suggestion, Houston Life. Sounds like Yuli. Oh, Huli. Huli. Yeah, oh, abbreviation, cute. right? Okay. I like Brittany's because she says the stallion. Oh, Derek and the stallion. It almost sounds like a... A band? I know. Or something. Uh, our stage manager today, Jason, has suggested wild whiskey. I like it. And I like, in case you're wondering too, the horse is taking a nap right here on my feet. A little sleepy. Don't be alarmed. He looks dead, but he's not. It's totally fine. He'll come back to life any okay. moment. Always tons of fun stuff happening here on the show and on Zoom. And we have our HL bingo to talk about. You have from now until tomorrow at 3 p.m. to enter to play. Rules and regulations are posted on our website. We're going to be playing bingo next week. Oh my gosh, yes. it's already time. We do have a lot of fun. It's a great way to connect with our viewers. And if you haven't registered, go for it. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's send, send it on over to Studio A. Keith, Christine, and Frank are standing by with a look at what's coming up at 4 o'clock. Hey, guys. You guys are having so much fun oh today. Oh my gosh, always. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love the yeah. horses taking a nap right there on your feet. That's good stuff. Yeah. All right, Amazing, we, have a lot, yeah. we have a lot coming up yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's ready for the weekend, right? We wanted to get here, especially since it's a holiday weekend. Well, we want to check in with Frank first on that. Frank, we might have some rain to dodge, You right? know, I think it's going to be off and on, generally, like we've been seeing yesterday and today. This is a beautiful click to pin this morning sunrise. It just felt like Labor Day weekend, didn't it? Just the sun coming up. Right now, it's a little hazy and hot. Right there in the 90s, Huntsville's 85, Brenham's 81. So if you've been lucky enough to have some rain, Rain or cloud cover, it has certainly cooled you down. 107 in Galveston, where there are still some heat advisories until 6 o'clock tonight. As far as rain, we've seen just a few scattered showers today. You can see here and there just a splash and dash back out toward Austin, a little more significant. So we'll check on that coming up at 4. Also, the tropics still a bit active, but not for us. We're really pretty quiet. We're just going to have to watch this upper level low as we head into the Labor Day weekend. So we'll talk more about that, that daily shower chance, and then still next week's cold front. Be cool. Be cool. Fingers crossed Let's for sure. Go. Frank, Indeed. thank you. Hey, speaking of the holiday weekend, more people are likely to be taking a road trip instead of flying. That's especially true right now because of the pandemic. Well, now there's a new way to learn more about landmarks and the histories of cities that you're driving through. There's an app for that. And we've told you about the so-called twin demic with COVID-19 and flu cases expected this fall. Now health reporter Haley Hernandez is speaking with a pediatrician about the risks for children. And finally, a teacher who helped bring a little life to his classroom with all of his students doing virtual learning. It got a little lonely, so he put his skills as a caricature artist to good use. We're going to show you what he did and how he did it, guys. Looks like he has some talent. I know, without a doubt. That's coming up at 4 o'clock. I love that. That's so going to be cool. a great I wish story. one of my teachers had done that. What I a great know. idea. Very cool. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. See ya. Still ahead, how one local credit union is helping students onto a financial career path. Lauren Kelly will see what money skills they're learning next. We'll be right back valuable skill many students don't get the opportunity to learn early on but Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union is working to change that. Well, Lauren Kelly is live from their new branch location in Sugarland to show us how. Hi Lauren. Hey guys let me tell you something if this was a part of my high school program I would have been a lot smarter. I would have learned a lot more. This is a beautiful building, and I'm really excited to show you guys what they have to offer as part of this program. And today I am here with their assistant branch manager, Ruth Sistrunk, and some of their student tellers, which you guys can see in just a second. But we got some questions to ask because I want to know more about this problem. What are the goals of this problem here with Fort Bend ISD? 
The goal is to teach these students how to be financially secure. They will know how to go out into the business world when they're ready and their uh, senior year is over. And hopefully will enhance their future endeavors. Absolutely. This is hands-on training, exactly how it is in the real world. Yes, it is. It's hands-on. They are so, actual employees here. They are hands-on. What services does this branch offer to the community at large? We have checking, savings. We do loans. We do which include our signature loans our commercial, and our mortgage loans. We have CDs, IRAs. Um, we are a full-service credit union. I've heard all these terms, and sadly, I don't know what a lot of them still mean. <laughs> so it's such a great program to come out and really learn and understand these real-life techniques. Yes, ma'am. So I also, we walked into the building. Everybody's masked. What kind of uh, safety and health precautions are you guys taking here? We are asking that the public wears their mask when they come in. We have hand sanitizers that are ready for, for use. We have plexiglass in front of our tellers. Um, and then we all wear our mask as well. Okay. And we're staying as far away as we can. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to go chat with some of the student tellers that we have that are actually applying their knowledge okay. to the services. And first up is Rakib Momin, your student teller. Do you like the program so far? Is it, is it fun? Yeah, it's really fun. Now, what attracted you to this program? Um, I loved the opportunity to be able to gain real life experience and also learn employable skills that will help me in college and after. Absolutely. Well, best of luck. This is a great place to start. Do you feel like this is really going to prepare you for the real world? I think it will prepare me because I've been learning financial skills and financial literacy skills that will help me in the world of business. Very wonderful. Thank you, Rocky. I'm going to move on over to these ladies right here. Up next is Kushi Desai. You're also a student teller. Now, tell me what specific skills that you are learning from this experience. Sure. So I've learned a lot to communicate better with co-workers and branch members. Um, I've also learned different financial skills like Ricky mentioned. Um, I definitely think all these skills are going to help later on because being an effective communicator and knowing how to manage money is going to help me in the long term. Yeah, managing money is a really important skill in the real world. I will tell you that for sure. Thank you so much and best of luck. Now, Namso Agim, you're also a teller here. How long have you been doing this? Um, I've only been doing this for a couple of weeks. We started in July big set of skills since being here? I learn something new every day I've been here. Everyone's really kind and they help me learn all the different types of skills. What do you hope to learn about the financial process here? Well, when I started, I really didn't know much about the financial world. So I've learned a lot of different things that everyone should know when working with money. I just have to point out, like, this is legitimate equipment you guys are working with. You take real-life transactions. It's like coming into working in a bank daily, right? Exactly. That's what we're doing. You could legit step into a bank as a teller tomorrow and, and be uh, totally fine on your job day. I feel fully equipped to work. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, and best of luck. I want to come back over to Ruth and chat a little bit more. <laughs> Can you tell us what else is in the building? What other careers... Uh, I know there's culinary arts, automotive, um, there's medical, there is a child development center. Um, I, I saw a salon. There is a salon. Um, um, Restaurant? Not warmer than that. Yeah, that's the culinary arts. They offer a grill. You can actually go in there and eat. Which is so amazing. I think this is such a wonderful yeah. building, and I think the whole experience is really something that students are going to love and love to talk about later on in life and really sure. pass along the knowledge. Exactly, exactly. And not every student is made to, to go to college, but they're getting their experience now, and they can go out into the real world as soon as they graduate. Absolutely. Well, Ruth, thank you so much for taking the time. We wish you the best of luck when this is all up and running with yeah. thousands of students yeah. here in the building. <laughs> it is the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, the brand new Career and Technical Center here in Sugar Land. For more info on their programs, just visit their website. It's bvscu.org or give them a call at 281-391-2149. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. That is fantastic, setting those students up for success. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Lauren. Coming up next on Houston Life, after tough setbacks and hard losses, a Houston native is headed to the 2021 Tokyo Olympics. Her inspirational story, next.
Welcome back. You know, when the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo were postponed because of the pandemic, athletes around the world were heavily impacted. Mm -hmm. And that includes one Houstonian who has been chasing her Olympic dream for a decade now. And it certainly has not been easy. Despite six knee surgeries, Taekwondo athlete Victoria Stambaugh has stayed positive through it all. And guess what, folks? She is joining us right now. Victoria, it is so great to see you. And first of all, huge Huge congratulations. Take us back to, to early March because you were gearing up to go to the Olympics and then suddenly that plan changed. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Again, thank you guys for having me here. It's an honor. Um, yeah, so my Olympic qualification was back in March, March 12th. Um, and that was literally the last uh, Taekwondo tournament of the whole year. So I had my Olympic qualification tournament March the 12th, and then boom, the very next day, they go ahead and cancel all of the Taekwondo tournaments for the whole year. So it was like literally by the grace of God, I get my qualification tournament in, I qualify for the Olympics, and now I'm secured. So it's just a blessing because um, so many athletes still haven't secured their spot right. for the Olympics. And so it's that um, very nerve wracking, right? Mm -hmm. So. I'm just very thankful that I can just kind of take a breather and just enjoy this time of qualifying for the Olympics. Absolutely, and of course, Tokyo, July 2021 will be your time to shine. We can't wait to see you then uh, during the Olympics. But talk to us about sort of your your road to the becoming an athlete that you are, because born and raised in Pasadena, uh, you started Taekwondo at the age of just eight. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so my dad was a professional boxer. He wanted to put me into a fighting sport. Uh, my parents decided Taekwondo, so I got into Taekwondo, um, and it really just went from there. I was a really good athlete pretty much at everything that I did, but um, I just kind of, you know, uh, did really well at Taekwondo, and uh, my parents kind of pushed me into that direction, and my coach as well. Um, and so, you know, I made U.S. national team at 15. Um, at 17 years old, I went to Puerto Rico to make their national team with a great opportunity from them. Um, my family is Puerto Rican, so I went ahead in 2011 to compete for Puerto Rico. And so it's, it's been a long journey. Well, and speaking of your long journey, Victoria, ACL surgery in 2010, ACL and meniscus surgery in 2012, and that list goes on and on. Six surgeries. Was there ever a time when you thought, oh my gosh, this is this is just not going to happen? Oh, 100%. Um, my first ACL surgery, I was young. I was 16 years old, so I was like, okay, you know, just kind of come back from that. That never really went well, that surgery. Uh, in 2012, I tore my ACL and meniscus, and from that point on, I said, I'm done. I quit, I can't do this anymore. Like, it was too much for me. Um, I really felt the prompting that I really had to keep going for some reason, I don't know, but I did. Uh, and then uh, the following year, I had to get my ACL redone that I had back in 2010. So in 2013, I had two surgeries, basically. Um, and then again, in 2018, I had a meniscectomy of the meniscus. And then last year was actually my biggest surgery ever, um, where they went ahead and had to take out about 80% of my meniscus. Mm. Um, so that was the time where I said, I think I'm done. Um, mm. I don't know if I actually can come back from this, be an athlete, let alone qualify for the Olympics. I, I really didn't think it was possible. Um, so that was the, the moment for me where I was like, I, I don't know if I can actually do this. I don't think so. So um, it really took my faith and my perseverance to, to trust in God and just to persevere and keep going and to just trust God and just do it. And look it. what happens when you do that. I mean, you're look at Lindsey Vaughn, uh, female skier, U.S. athlete. I mean, amazing. She has that same story of perseverance. And I, and I love that you channel that. And I think that's what separates the elite athletes from everybody else. Because if you want it bad enough, you find a way to get up and do it again. And I think that speaks volumes to not only the person that you are, but how you were raised by your parents. Oh yeah, my parents, um, they're my biggest supporters. Obviously, my uh, my dad has been my number one fan. My mom has been my number one fan. Like, I couldn't be here without them. Um, I'm so, so blessed to have them as my parents. And they have been the ones to just keep pushing me and come on, Victoria, you got this. And just praying for me and just believing. Um, and so 
I mean, it was it was an army of people to to make this happen. Uh, mentally, you know, um, uh, uh, a mental coach, my you know trainers. Uh, so it was an army to to help me get this far. Absolutely. And uh, you haven't exactly been sitting around the past few months, <laughs> Victoria. <bonbons>. You're a student <laughs> at U of H, scheduled yeah. to graduate this fall after studying kinesiology. Congratulations! But also in the meantime, during COVID, I understand you and your fiance opened up your own facility. It's called Believe, Commit, Achieve Taekwondo and Parkour up in the woodlands. This is incredible. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we're so excited. Um, after we we got a um, notification that the Olympics will be po postponed for next year, we said, you know what, let's do it. Let's do this now. And um, we're the type of people we overcome obstacles. And so this is a huge obstacle in our way, this pandemic. But we really, you know, kept faith uh, and just, just go for it. You, sometimes it's just got to go. You never know until you try, right? You say that all the time. But until you actually do that, you, you never know. It's so we, we went for it and here we are today. I'm actually at my facility. Um, so we're, we're finally open. Uh, there was a lot of hiccups, but you know, I'm not, I'm not a stranger to that. <laughs> What's great too is parkour is wonderful for all ages. I see a lot of um, uh -huh. seniors doing this too to help with mobility and balance. So it's not just for young kids. Yeah, absolutely. Parkour is great. Um, and like Taekwondo and parkour, they have like very similar movements and some things and they um, they go well together. So um, this is actually the only parkour uh, gym in the Houston area. So I'm really, really excited and just blessed that we're here and, and we're open. Well, we are excited for you, Victoria Stambaugh. Yeah. Looking forward to Tokyo 2021. And uh, we can't wait to have you in studio, meet you in person. Maybe we'll take a class yeah. up at the studio one day. Oh, that would be yeah. cool. Could right? we come take a class? Yes, absolutely. I would love that. That'd be so much fun. Okay, we gotta we're going to do that. We're going to mark it down. Victoria Stambaugh, thanks again. Best of luck and congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much, you guys. Y'all have a good one. And to our viewers, if you would like to keep up with Victoria, very simple, just visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Beautiful inside and out. And speaking of sports, after the break, from a signature cocktail to your own party spread, what to eat and drink while watching this year's Kentucky Derby. We're off to the races next. Back to school. Just got to get yeah. in a, a quick workout for a little horsey before we continue with the show. Yes, shot. I love your tail. It's so cute. <laughs> Did we figure out the name? <laughs> I need to work on that sound effect. We're going to share more names coming up, but it's often called the most exciting two minutes in sports. The 146 Kentucky Derby happens on Saturday. Right, right here, here on, on KPRC. KPRC. But this year's big race is going to look a little bit different because of no COVID-19. No fans, folks, will actually be present at Churchill Downs. But that's not a problem for our next guest. Here's America's CEO, that's Chief Entertaining Officer Tim Laird, with some ideas to help you derby at home. Good to be with you again, and it's the 146th running of the Kentucky Derby. Now, if you're having a watch party at home, you've got to have a mint julep, and here's an easy recipe for you. Starts out glass with crushed ice. To that, I'm gonna add two ounces of Woodford Reserve bourbon, which is the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. That goes in, and then an ounce of mint simple syrup, which you can make your own, or actually even easier, buy, already done. That goes into my glass. I'm gonna give it a quick stir, add a little more ice on top, just to top that off, boom. And then a good garnish of bouquet of mint. That goes in, and of course, a sipping straw to go with it. And there it is a great mint julep. Now, a couple serving ideas from our urban country. It can also be used as a little dip. I've also uh, cut out these breads with uh, biscuit cutter, cookie cutters, and put out an assortment on a single individual platter. Now, to give us some other treats and ideas is the executive chef from Churchill Downs himself, David Danielson. Thanks, Tim. Well, as you said, you know, we've got a lot of great dishes here um, out of our book. These are some of our favorites. We've got our hickory smoked mac and cheese. 
We've got here a little braised short ribs. We've got a little tomato watermelon salad. And then here, I'm gonna make one of these in a minute. This is a little roasted sweet potato, dandelion green, and some uh, black eyed pea salad. And what we've done, Tim, is you know, you and I were talking, obviously derby in September, something very different. And you know, people who are having these small parties, we've really changed it up. Originally, these dishes were made kind of as a buffet, but what we've done here is taking everything and put them in individual containers so when your guests come over, everybody can kind of come and pick and choose, and uh, everything's been put into individual servings. And it's easy for the guests, and uh, it's safe too. I like that. Absolutely. So I'm going to show you really quick how we make this salad. So we've got some roasted, some sweet potatoes that we've diced, a little salt, pepper, uh, oil. We just roasted them in an oven. I'm gonna mix those in. A little bit of sliced red onion. We've got some black-eyed peas that we've cooked. These were dried and then we cooked them. Or you could get some canned ones. They're pretty readily available. Dandelion greens. Uh, you know, a little taste of the south. And this is a little sorghum and bourbon vinaigrette. So we're just gonna toss all this together. And again, all these recipes uh, are in our book. Uh, Bourbon Country Cookbook came out about uh, Derby a year and a half ago. And so we'd season this up with a little salt and pepper. In the book, you know, we didn't have the black eyed peas, but as with all these recipes, you know, we really want people to kind of take a look at them, make them their own. If there's something you want to do, add a little something. Uh, you know, that's what Derby's about, right? That Everybody. is what Derby's about. And, and, and you know what? Just have fun with it because that's what it's all about. It's a Derby party at home. You have fun. Make it your own recipe. Uh, I do that with most recipes I see. I mean, we make them easy anyway, but you can actually personalize them. And, uh, of course, a lot of these recipes uh, you actually serve at Churchill Downs. So it's kind of exciting to have Churchill Downs recipes from the executive chef at your home. Well, I'll tell you what. This is exciting. The one thing you can't forget too, Dave, is... Don't forget your hat, even if it's at a derby party at home. And I found a good one. What do you think of this, Dave? Now that's a hat, buddy. <laughs> that thing undoes me. Cheers, my friend. Happy derby. Happy derby, everybody. Oh I my gosh. love his hat. It's perfect. It's just not big enough. No. Tim, that's the problem. We need Tim, more hat. Daniel, thank you so much. <laughs> we have shared their Derby Day recipes on our website, and their Bourbon Country Cookbook is available on Amazon. Oh, it's a great one, too. And don't forget to watch NBC's coverage of the Kentucky Derby right here on KPRC starting at 1.30 p.m. That's on Saturday. Is this guy going to be competing? Of course. Long in the tooth. He's got to get ready. We have gotten some more viewer name ideas, starting with Lori. Buzz, that's a great name. And I think it's because people always think we're drunk. I we're think not. So. We're not. I, I promise. Like Debbie's is booty. Because that's all we saw was your booty. Uh, okay, I would just like to point out that that was the shape of the costume, not my actual. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say something. It was just sort of saggy and misshapen. I don't want people to think that was me. Okay, Trish says, I think the horse should be named Houston since Cute. your dog is named Tex. Good combo. Oh, okay. Tex and Houston. Trish, that's great. I like Michelle's. Karen. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a good horse or a bad horse? A bad one? Okay, Karen. Mm hmm. Bye, Karen. I like it. What? What did I miss? <laughs> no, I love the suggestions. Thank you so much. We can't call him Karen. I know. No, he's a good boy. All right, we'll be right back. Let's take a break. What happened? You want a little nap, buddy? <laughs> Not Karen. Don't worry. Don't worry. About the late Toasted s'more shake. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we're getting to know Randy McElvoy, ahead of the start of football season. We'll catch up with the KPRC Channel 2 sports director and anchor about how his life off camera, the surprising items he collects, and his favorite moments covering sports. I love me some Randy McElvoy. What a great guy, too. We also have on country singer Matt Stell. 
not only is he good to look at, but it's good to listen to as well. You've heard him on country radio with his hits like Prayed For You. His current single, Everywhere But On, is climbing the country charts. We're going to learn more about his background and how he chose Music City over med school. Plus, we're going to get a special acoustic performance as well. Fantastic. Can't wait to catch up with him. You know, any time now you could take off that costume. What do you mean we're bonded now? <laughs> I can't just ditch I hope you wear it pets. tomorrow. Thank you for all the name suggestions. I'm going to wear this horse, I mean ride this horse, <laughs> every day from now on. Uh, well, we'll toss it over to Keith and Christine. I bet Keith and Christine will approve of my new pet. Guys, what do you think? Man, uh, horses are one of my favorite animals, man. I mean, you, yeah, I love it. All you I can say is earlier today when we saw you, completely out of context, no idea what you were doing, it was like, you know what? God, we love Houston life. <laughs> well, you know what? This is the best kind of horse to have because you don't have to follow it around with the scooper. No poopers. <laughs> and you don't have to feed it either. Nope. <laughs> well, he drinks a bit, but that's okay. We still love him. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Guys, oh so much fun on your show. We appreciate it. We got a lot coming up. Yeah, we uh, do. Today we do. at 4 o'clock. Yeah.